I feel like I should be wearing a dress shirt with this level of information, but let's just get started. So can you follow a high fat diet, a ketogenic, a carnivore diet without a gallbladder? And regardless of whether this is relevant to you or not, the dietary and lifestyle choices I'm about to suggest certainly are. That being said, if you don't have a gallbladder, you're going to have to alter your diet as well as possibly supplement some things. The gallbladder is a pouch-like organ that stores a liquid called bile. It's located near the liver and there's a tube connecting the liver to the gallbladder to the small intestine. Bile is used for emulsifying fats, aiding with the digestion and absorption of both macronutrients and micronutrients from fat-based foods. But the gallbladder doesn't just store bile, it concentrates the bile and releases it at intervals depending on your meal. So someone without a gallbladder is not concentrating that bile to make it powerful enough to aid in digestion as it's supposed to. If you don't have a gallbladder, the weaker bile will just trickle down into the small intestine and depending on your liver's ability to produce bile, you know, you can have too much or too little and the former will usually cause diarrhea, the latter causing constipation. Uh, but just to take a more in-depth look at this, now, the gallbladder is actually situated behind the liver and there's like a little bit hanging down and all of this stuff is kind of crunched together. Think of this as like a, a translucent image. The reason someone might get their gallbladder removed is because it's full of gallstones to the point of no return. And I'm sure some doctors pressure people to remove the gallbladder when it's not completely necessary, but there is certainly an amount of stones that makes it difficult, if not impossible, to restore normal function, you know, to have your body dissolve those stones naturally. Gallstones are simply concentrated cholesterol. We use cholesterol to make bile, but when there's a lack of bile in the gallbladder, these stones can form because bile helps in eliminating excess cholesterol. It's not an excess of cholesterol. It's not an excess of bile that causes gallstones. It's too high of a concentration due to a lack of bile. Gallbladder attacks are what usually lead to the removal of the organ, you know, which is when a gallstone gets stuck in that tube that connects the liver with the gallbladder and the small intestine. This can make you feel nauseous, giving you stomach pain, right shoulder pain, digestive issues, bloating, belching, burping, constipation, and almost half of people that get their gallbladder removed have permanent, lifelong digestive issues. That explains why people with impaired liver function, fatty liver for instance, tend to have both high cholesterol and gallbladder problems. The liver becomes damaged, resulting in a lack of bile production. That lack of bile corresponds with the cholesterol concentrating in the gallbladder because the bile is not there to remove it. This is the underlying cause question. What is causing there to be a lack of bile? One is excess estrogen, and just about everyone has too much estrogen in their diet and lifestyle due to pollutants, you know, food, water, antibiotics, whatever it may be. And this estrogen damages the bile salt export pump which transports bile out of the liver, and that results in bile acids accumulating in the liver and too few bile acids present in the bile. These bile acids comprise approximately 80% of the bile, which can then be combined with amino acids to form bile salts. This brings up a lot of hypotheticals for dysfunction. Bile salts are the only major method for cholesterol excretion. So if you aren't getting enough protein, enough amino acids to form the bile salts, it's easy to see why the cholesterol can concentrate and form stones. That could be due to a lack of protein in the diet, a lack of protein digesting enzymes from the pancreas and stomach, which opens up an even bigger can of worms. Not only are you lacking bile salts without the protein, you will also be lacking the intestinal bile acid transporter as those require amino acids as well. Intestinal bile acid transporters recycle bile from the small intestine to be reused. And if that's not functioning, it's another reason to have a lack of bile. The majority of the bile that our bodies use is actually recycled, so you can imagine with all this dysfunction, you're just adding more and more stress. 
Insulin resistance is another factor, and this has to do with impaired liver function. As just about everyone knows, insulin resistance leads to fatty liver, and from what we spoke about previously, that can cause the gallbladder problems on its own due to a lack of bile. I'm assuming it also has something to do with stress on the pancreas and a lack of protein digesting enzymes to form those amino acids needed to make bile salts and bile acid transporters. Cortisol, our primary stress hormone, is another contributing factor as the signaling of bile acid recycling is controlled by cortisol. So if your adrenals are really burnt out and you lack cortisol around meal times, you aren't going to produce enough bile and even if you did have enough bile, your body might not be able to signal it to be released to digest the meal. Now that hormones are involved, you throw in all of those hormone regulating glands. The thyroid, the hypothalamus, the adrenals, and the amount of metabolic pathways involved becomes overwhelming. So I think we need to just take it a step back and go with what's simple, what we know. Bile release and production is triggered by saturated fat consumption. So despite all of those other factors we discussed, someone on a standard American diet might not be actually consuming that much saturated fat. And when that happens, the gallbladder essentially dries up bile stores and begins forming those gallstones. Americans are more likely getting large amounts of polyunsaturated omega-6 fats like soybean oil and the feedlot meats that have been fed soy and corn. And there's a study that actually demonstrates feeding unsaturated fat increases fecal bile acid excretion and cancer more than saturated fat. So we know some type of dysfunction is caused in the bowels with omega-6 fatty acids and vegetable seed oils in general are a cause for metabolic diseases, especially fatty liver. We even see studies showing that omega-3 fatty acids dissolve gallstones and decrease biliary saturation, which means that someone had thick impacted bile. So their bile was concentrating into gallstones and was remedied simply by taking omega-3 fatty acids. Honestly, I could probably research for hours and hours and hours more on the gallbladder and find never ending causes as well as remedies. But if you simply follow the principles I advise in my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, my carnivore diet course, and just my YouTube channel in general, you won't run into this issue in the first place. Every single aspect of the lifestyle matters. Are you getting enough sun for vitamin D? Is your diet balanced in both macronutrients and micronutrients? Are you exercising? Are you in a low Wi-Fi environment? If we address all of those things and incorporate whatever supplements are needed to balance the nutrients, the body will, over the course of several months, get to the ideal state. So we didn't really answer the first question. Can you follow a carnivore keto high fat diet without a gallbladder? Hopefully, you're Italian or a race that tolerates carbohydrates well. Otherwise, you're going to have to take ox bile supplements, bile salts, lipase, and a bunch of different things that can aid with fat digestion. But keep in mind the overall causes of this problem in the first place, omega-6 fatty acids, fructose, high fructose corn syrup and processed foods, damaging the liver, as well as environmental pollutants uh, like the estrogen, like those antibiotic bioactive molecules that can end up in factory feedlot meat. Hopefully this gives you guys an in-depth understanding of the gallbladder and you can apply that information to your personal diet. So if you guys could please, you know, drop me a comment down below, like the video, and above all, please share the video on various social media. If you do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description below. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night.